Let us explore the Jane Street puzzle for August 2023, single cross two. As you've seen on the screen, this month's puzzle concerns a 3D unit lattice. We consider placing a line segment with length D in the grid with a random position and orientation. The objective of this puzzle is to find the length D that maximizes the probability that this randomly placed line segment only intersects with one of our grid planes. That is to say, we are maximizing the probability that one end of the random segment is in the center cube and the other is in an orthogonally adjacent one. Once we have the optimal length, we will also calculate the maximum percentage of having a single cross. This puzzle is one that at face value seems tedious and quite challenging. However, we will see that there is an elegant view of the problem that allows us to bypass the complications and arrive at our answer. In my estimation, this is what puzzles and to a large extent math and science are all about. We can sample random line segments and keep track of how many have a single cross, highlighted in green, and how many have zero or more than one cross in red. If we repeat this many times for various lengths d, we will see that there is a maximum somewhere around 0.75, but we will have to do better if we want any hope of obtaining the 10 significant digits requested in the puzzle statement. To find this probability, our first instinct might be a brute force method, like integrating over all possible positions of the center of the line segment, and all possible orientations, and then determining how many of those have a single cross. Here, the bold one is the indicator function that returns one if there is a single cross with the given parameters, and zero if not. To get the probability, we then normalize by all of the possible positions and orientations. At this point, we quickly realize that even if we can technically solve the problem this way, it is going to be a complete nightmare that will make you never want to see another math puzzle again. So instead, let's dare to find a more elegant approach. To do so, we will knock off a few dimensions and look at the same question in 1D. Here, things are greatly simplified since we don't need to worry about orientation. If we restrict ourselves to thinking about D less than or equal to one, so that there can't be more than one crossing, then the probability of a single cross is simply D. If we add back in one dimension, the argument stays the same except we now need to take into account the orientation theta. Here, the probability that we only cross one vertical grid line is still given by the x component of the segment, d cosine theta. Similarly, the probability that it crosses a horizontal grid line is given by the y component of the segment, d sine theta. We can return to the relevant case of 3D and continue with the same logic, now with an additional polar angle, phi. Still assuming that d is less than or equal to 1, the probability that we cross a plane that is constant in x or y is given by the x and y component of the segment, respectively, each one of which has gained a factor of sine phi. The probability that we cross a plane that is constant in z is the z component, d cosine phi. Armed with the individual crossing probabilities for a given orientation, we can find the probability that we only cross a single plane, say one constant in x. This probability is just the probability that we cross an x plane times the probability that we don't cross a y plane or a z plane. And then all of this is averaged over all possible orientations. Here, the factor of sine phi takes into account that there are fewer orientations near the poles compared to the equator. We then multiply by 3 since we can have the single crossing happen with an x-plane, y-plane, or z-plane. Solving this integral ultimately leaves us with the probability of a single cross in 3D for d less than or equal to 1. We find that the maximum probability is just above 50% and occurs when d is about 0.745. As a sanity check, we can compare our work with our earlier simulations to make sure nothing went horribly wrong. Finally, we can compare this result with those in 1D and 2D. This result surprised me. Prior to solving, I assumed that the additional dimension would result in a larger segment length being optimal, and that this might lead to higher single cross percentages. This gap in my intuition motivated me to ask what would happen if we kept increasing the number of dimensions above 3. 
Will the optimal d and percentage of single crosses continue to decrease, or will they go back up at some dimension? Will they continually shrink to zero, or grow to infinity, or will they asymptote at a specific value? And can we say anything about the general problem of k crosses? We will build off the intuition we gained here and explore these questions in a follow up video. Thanks for watching. If you want more explanations of Jane Street puzzles, make sure to check out my channel and subscribe.